Hey everybody, Arthur of Gaming here. I had a situation at my D&D table the, the other night. We had our beautiful Dwarven Forge train on, on the table. We had some nice WizKids minis going on our Dwarven Forge train. And one of my players, not knowing any better, decided to drop a lightning bolt through the middle of my black pudding. Well, for those of you that do or do not know, when a black pudding gets hit, hit by lightning, it splits into two smaller black puddings. Hmm, I don't have any minis for that. How do we deal with that? So I got together with my lovely wife and decided to come up with a uh, solution. Okay, so here we have our dungeon, our nice Dwarven Forge 3D terrain laid, laid out here. And we have our, 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 our wizard here. This is actually a druid mini, but I thought I'd use that for a minute just because I like the way, the way it looks. Um, and we got your black pudding. Uh, this is kind of the scenario that happened for us uh, the, the other night at the gaming table. And the wizard threw a lightning bolt through the middle of the black pudding. So according to the staff, it should break into two puddings that are of a smaller size. So I have a one large black pudding mini. So even if I had another black pudding mini, that's not a smaller size. So I had have two large black puddings and it's not exactly what I was looking for. So my wife and I decided we were going to try and figure out how do we could make this uh, solution work for us. And we came up with some, our good, a good solution. We made some little black puddings. Yay. So we got some medium bases. We made these cool looking little mini black puddings. And uh, again, you could do that. Um, if you had some small bases, you could also take the medium base black puddings and make some smaller black puddings. We decided to just do a bunch <laughs> a <little> of, wild. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to just make a bunch of uh, little medium base black puddings as, as you can Swarm. see. Um, I think they look pretty pretty good. I think they come out well. Uh, some of them I think are kind of germ like looking, which I thought was kind of in, kind of interesting too. But um, so now here to kind of explain how we did it, because my wife is the genius and she's the one that really did it. I just kind of painted afterwards. Um, here is my wife Julie. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie. So Art had some empty bases, which we went ahead and took a hot glue gun. I uh, waited for that. I left it on a cool setting. Mine has a hot setting and a low, high setting and a low setting. I left it on the low setting. Uh, otherwise, it just kind of puddled um, out too quickly. Uh, so what I did is I put a generously sized blob of hot glue on the base. Um, I left it sitting upright until it spread out a little bit. And then I flipped it upside down so that it wouldn't get too close to the edges because I want to build it upward. So I kind of, you know, until it was fairly cool, was just moving it around to get it the shape that I want, which is basically kind of a mounded, um, almost like one of those one of these little like glass this, right? things. Yeah, so if you can really mounded things here. see how the, the base of that has like a kind of a, a base there. So I kind of made a base. For a couple of them, after that was dry, I have to wait for that to cool. Um, after that was cool, either I did a second base or a second almost like making a snowman so like i did a second portion of snowman um for some of them i let that cool i would again hold it upside down or right side up depending on how i wanted it to appear on top of the second section so if it started to get too low and spread out too much i'd flip it upside down and it would kind of pull back the other direction um it was leading one direction, you tip it back the other way, um, blow on it, cool it down faster so that you can kind of get the shape that you want out of it. Um, for another set of them, what I did was on that second one, once it was kind of, I kind of held it up, uh, upside down pretty much the whole time and it kind of elongated this direction. And then once it was mostly cool, I flipped it back. I use these, which are a manicure tool kit set. So um, usually I use these for painting, um, but it worked well in this case. I tried it with toothpicks. So if you have toothpicks, you can use that, but it's hard to clean off the glue at the end. This was much easier. And what I did was I dabbed into my chunk of hot glue. So it was upside down. It kind of got into a lump shape. And then when I flipped it over, I would dip into it and pull out. So dip in and pull out, dip in and pull out, and it would give me all these little arms. Sometimes I did have to like wiggle it around to make sure the arms were going all the right direction. You can tell that, you know, obviously not a perfect job there, but this was our first time trying it. So I think it came out pretty good. Um, first, another set of them, what I did was I did kind of, you can see, so I have a, my first level of snowman, the second level of snowman, and then I did an I let that cool up there and then I did an extra glop on top and then I did pull all my kind of tentacles out of that piece. 
once that was cool and dry, we went ahead and painted it with just some straight up easy, cheap acrylic paint. And then once the acrylic paint was dry over top of it, we went over it with a gloss glaze um, to give it that nice shiny, puddingy kind of texture. And that was it. Pretty straightforward. All right, folks, there you go. So that was our quick little tutorial on how we did it. I'm sure there are many ways to do it, but that was, this one worked really well well for us. Um, and that's how we get some more black puddings to add, add onto the table. Take, take, take care, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our video, to our channel, and follow me on Instagram at the, at the Arthur of Gaming.